But when this ceremony was introduced into Thailand by King Wachi Rawut, who was educated at Sandhurst and Oxford, served in the Durham Light Infantry, and became an honorary general in the British Army, the British King was also a Far Eastern King. In fact, he was the King Emperor of India. In Bangkok, the capital city, on a day of celebration, King Pumepon makes his way to Thailand's central Buddhist shrine, the Temple of the Emerald Buddha. The study in his palace looks and sounds like a command post. Here he talks to David Lomax about his job as king. How do you see your duty as a king? Why do you think that Thailand should continue to have a king? It is not for me to say. I do things that I think is useful and that's all. But are you conscious as, as King of Thailand yourself of being able to do something which you feel wouldn't be possible without a monarchy here? Well, I don't know what can be defined as king. That is the big trouble. Because in my position is called I am called a king, but uh, my duty is, if have, uh, you have noticed, is not the duty of a king. It's something that is quite different or difficult to, to define. I do things I think that will be useful, and that is all. If you ask me what I had in mind, or what the plan I had, I had no plan. Just like I'm today, we are going to have something and we are going to do it. We don't know what the something is, but we are going to do something that is good. That is the, the, the plan or the, and the, the spirit. Anywhere we go, we are looked at, and people are interested in us. They look at us, they don't want to bother us. They want to know more how they eat, how they sit, how they walk. They don't look with uh, curiosity or hostility. Kings and queens of Thailand have always been in close contact with the people, really. And they usually regard the kings as father of, of nation. That's why usually we don't have much private life because we are considered father and mother of the nation. So naturally, we are all the time with the people. To the king, Thailand's danger means that state ceremonial is no empty form. Speeches at the royal audience for his birthday, no mere platitudes, but expression of the struggle for survival. Having praised the king's compassion and impartiality, the crown prince calls upon him blessings from Buddha and from the country's protective gods and spirits. From Kingship, if we have to use this word, has changed all the time. Since the old times and then since the uh, advent of uh, founding of Bangkok uh, capital, it has always changed. Uh, my great-grandfather uh, was the philosopher king. He was the king uh, that you will know under the name of King Mungkut. The most sacred image of Thailand, the center of the Grand Palace, the Emerald Buddha. The image is actually made of jade and is about 2,000 years old. It was installed here by Rama I, founder of the Chakri dynasty. 
This ceremony on the coronation anniversary shows more than any other how the king has made ancient court procedure relate to the pressing current needs of the country. The oath of allegiance to the land taken in the presence of the Buddha. The men gathered here to take the oath are soldiers. Earlier in the day, they were decorated for bravery against the communist insurgents. Ancient right is practiced by those at risk from modern danger. This ceremony shows more clearly how the king is indeed the soul of his nation, the center round which army, government and religion cohere. The participants in the ceremony remind us of the danger that threatens this nation and its soul. Buddhist right though it is, there is also the typical Thai admixture of Hinduism. Here the officials are Brahmins, descendants of Hindu immigrants, whose function in the state is to keep alive the Hindu rituals which originally came from India many centuries ago. Brahmin priests incidentally do have to pass a novitiate as Buddhist monks. The state sword is dipped in lustral water. It has now been purified. The oath of allegiance is taken to the land. If at any time I dishonor my pledge, may misfortune fall upon me and plague me forever. An older version of the oath, no longer used, contains a powerful set of possible deaths for those who flout its precepts, lightning and thunderbolts, royal weapons, poison, and the animals of land or water. In the past, incidentally, the king did not take the oath himself. His power was godlike. That he now takes the oath is a bowing to modern notions of kingship. The king's convoy in action. It leaves more or less every day when he's in the regions and covers about 30,000 miles a year. The purpose of these tours is always twofold. On the one hand is the improvement in the people's welfare and the development which the king achieves, and this is certainly significant. On the other hand, there is his presence as king among the villagers. Before his visit, they may feel themselves neglected. In his presence, and after he has gone, they know that they are not. The ladies-in-waiting act as social workers, taking extensive notes on every case so that each one can be followed up afterwards. This means typing up every night, and a lot of work when the court has returned to Bangkok. <coughs> no previous king had ever even visited the Northeast. King Pumipun spent the first ten years of his reign traveling very thoroughly through every district of the country so that he could see the problems in detail at first hand. This detailed knowledge now forms a base for rapidly expanding work in all kinds of development. Always the encouragement, listening to their problems, helping them to help themselves. Did they have any particular problem they wanted no, you to? No, no problem. They were very happy. And uh, I asked uh, in what tempo they, they were going, and they said uh, the name, and I looked in the, the map. And there was a, there is a old uh, temple here, and they did not... Uh, remember the name. They seem to be very impressed with your geographical knowledge. Oh, because they are very happy when uh, somebody comes and knows about their village. But you go everywhere with this map, I notice. It, not, it never, not this particular one, but yes, there, there yes, is never a map from your hand. I try to have a map so that I know where 
I'm going. And they are happy when they know that the official map is, there is a, the village is on their map. Are there some ca occasions when people live in villages that aren't marked on your map or that have the wrong name? Well, that is what happened now. What, what, what is what happened? There's a village that has no name and I put a name on it. The King and Queen receive representatives of friendly countries, both formally and informally, turning state functions into personal affairs whenever possible. Um, I saw that blue, lovely blue. Um. A natural part of the royal family's job is to promote the country's crafts, culture, and special products, even at parties. The Queen is very much concerned to increase silk production throughout the country. And she makes a point of wearing Thai fabrics herself. This is one of the King's new dams. Irrigation is probably the aspect of development to which he contributes most. Apart from his boat with the rudderless engine, the King has designed dams and irrigation channels himself. With his quick grasp of the subject, he always makes his experts work hard. And though he seems able to master almost anything he puts his hand to, it is probably the many facets of engineering for which he has the most talent. Oh, yes, yes. The King carries a two-way radio with him at all times. He is said even to sleep with it. This means that he's the first to hear of any crisis. But he seems oblivious to everything as he concentrates on the job in hand. And helped by this water. An army camp. These soldiers have been waiting all day for the king's arrival. That is often the case, but the Thais do not mind waiting. It is still such an honor to see the king. Could you tell us why you think it's so important to come and inspect a military position like this, please? They have a important task to do is to uh, keep the area safe, the territory safe, and in fact to help the people because the people in this area is very, very poor, so poor. This is the place where it is called uh, so-called liberated area, one of the liberated area. It isn't red anymore, but still the fact is the people, is, the people are very poor still. So the soldier here helps to um, give them advice on how to grow their crops and how to look after their children. They are loved everywhere, the soldiers I mean because they don't fight with arms only, because uh, they have been looking after the welfare of the people most. In fact, they have won the heart of the people. I think that is the right way to fight the insurgents. 